Hi, and welcome back to Dubai Real Estate Philosophy. My name is Ahmed, and in this video, we're going to be talking about the Dubai floods and the update, the reactions from the Dubai government and Umar management and different developers as well. Now, a lot of people, they really dished on Dubai. They really threw a lot of mud on Dubai, you know, after the floods were recently hit. A lot of people on social media, I'm sure you probably saw some reality stars and all these things that came a bit of controversy. Now, look, me as a real estate agent, obviously, look, we sell Dubai as a dream city, the merchant of hope as a lifestyle. Now, it's very annoying for me to see all these things where, you know, the reality on the ground could not be farther away from the truth, right? Look, we're standing right now in the Greens community, right? One of the first communities or the first community by MR. As you can see, this community is over a decade old, right? And you can see the kind of management we have. The facilities management is on spot. That's also done by MR. They maintain it by MR. All these things are done by MR. Now, where I'm standing right now, this entire area was flooded. You could not come here. They blocked off the whole thing. They had generators running for weeks trying to support everything. But the thing was, look, Dubai's in the middle of the desert, right? We don't really have, to, and then people are like, oh, we don't have sewage systems and all these things. Look, we're in the desert. Dubai government is one of the most fiscally responsible governments in the world. That's why we don't have a lot of taxes. There's so many videos on YouTube. They're like, oh, Burj Khalifa doesn't have a sewage system. Oh, Dubai spent this much on this failed project. People don't get it. The Dubai government doesn't spend anything. The private sector puts the money in it, and that's why we have the successful projects that we do have. Burj Khalifa is the tallest building in the world. It's for a reason, is because private companies like Imar, they came in, they did a feasibility report, and they actually built the thing. Yeah, sure, was it difficult? It was. But if it was so easy, why doesn't any other city do it as well, right? I mean, Saudi Arabia supposedly has been trying to build a tallest tower. Now they have another two kilometer project. They couldn't even finish the first one. So if it was that easy, every country would be doing it. China tried it, Kuwait tried it. All these countries, they try to see the biggest differences Dubai didn't spend a dime. It was the private sector that does these things. The government doesn't spend anything on these kind of communities where we're standing. The government has nothing to do with the management. All these facilities, all these communities, they are managed by the private sector and that's why they're amazing. And again, we don't need to have the largest drainage systems in the world. Yeah, sure, Sheikh Hamdan himself, he allocated another 80 billion now to the drainage system to make sure we, if we ever do face rains like this again in the future, we're covered. But the fact that people are just dissing Dubai, saying that, oh, it drowned. Look, if this happened in any other country, I'm personally from Pakistan, if it happened in Pakistan or any other Asian country, I mean, hundreds of people would have died, you know. I think there were only four or five people who unfortunately passed away in this, you know, very tragic incident. But for the most part, here we are. I mean, it's been like a week. Everything's back to normal. You know, the flights are going, the streets are fine, everything. As a matter of fact, not only that, all the developers are paying for all the damages, if any, caused to all the residents. Yeah, of course, there was a lot of communities like Nishama, Mudan, who were super drowned. But those developers, they paid up. You know, they said, okay, it's fine. We'll cover all the costs. It didn't cost anything to the government. That's why we don't have any taxes. Yeah, sure, we have a 5% VAT, and yeah, okay, now we have a 9% corporate VAT. It's still better than the rest of the world, right? And the reason for that is because, again, as we talk about it, all these master plan communities are designed by private developers. The government has nothing to do with it. That's why it's high quality, high maintenance, because if a developer doesn't provide good service, doesn't provide good quality, doesn't provide that lifestyle that they manage, people just don't buy it. You know, they, they get losses, they fix their act, and they come back. As we saw with Damak, you know, Damak Hills 2 came out, they had a bit small sizes, quality wasn't the best, but then the market spoke. No one bought it, and now Damak had to do a lot of work, and they finally rebranded it. And of course, you know, you can see our video on why you, we believe you should buy the Mac now. We think they changed it around. But anyways, the, I mean, long rant cutting short, people don't understand. Dubai's government doesn't have to spend a lot. It's all about private money, private entities putting money. Yes, were there a lot of projects canceled? Sure, but that was because of the 2008 financial crisis. I mean, that started in America. It wasn't Dubai's fault. As a matter of fact, it has the opposite effect on us. When there's problems in the world, political problems, there's a lot of wars going on, there's inflation problems, you know, interest rates. Dubai's perfectly fine. Our interest rates are perfectly fine. It's because we are very, very fiscally responsible. The government does not have any debt. It's the private sector, foreign investments that are funding all these projects. It's because Dubai is a safe haven. It's very, very secure. It's very, very safe. People live here. There are generations. There are people who've been living here for four generations. And that's one of the reasons. So I'm very, very happy to see, you know, and even such a crazy calamity that Dubai did face in the Dubai floods that Dubai came out very, very strong. You know, I really, really thank the, you know, the Dubai RTA, Roads and Transport Authority, the Dubai police. Uh, you know, they really, really helped people out. And it was amazing to see the community as well. The camaraderie, the community. In our WhatsApp groups, we had this file where there was a list of, you know, people, who, areas who needed help. Help. There was a list of numbers that you could call for free food. People were donating. I myself personally saw a lot of company, you know, our company ourselves, we, we donated a lot of foods to, you know, families who need it. So it was a beautiful thing to see everyone come together, the government, private sector, and the public sector working together to solve this entire thing and to ensure that, you know, in the future, we don't have any of these kind of problems. So this
this is what a good country is this is what a good city is this is what a good community is everyone working together private money not a lot of taxes not a lot of bureaucracy to solve the everyday problems that we might face this was just a quick video that i thought i wanted to make on the floods as an answer to all the people who keep on dissing dubai that oh dubai is, is the end of the world for some reason you know dubai is drowned now and it's nothing like that here I am standing right in front of you. You couldn't move here. This entire lake, as you can see, was overflowing. This entire community was underwater. But as you can see now, it's back to normal. And you know, it's only been like a week or so. So we're back to normal. We have power. Everything is great. There's no problem at all. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye for and now. You can conveniently reach out to me directly on my WhatsApp by scanning the QR code at the top right corner.